My name is Mark Syme. I'm the minister of the Northfield Church of Christ, and I would like to take this opportunity to welcome you to the evening services for Sunday, April the 23rd. We will be singing several songs, observing the Lord's Supper, and I have a message for you that I hope will be uh, enlightening to you and uh, that uh, you may be able to take something with you. Uh, the first song that we're going to sing, and we sing from Songs of Faith and Praise, is number 48, O Love That Will Not Let Me Go. O Love That Will Not Let Me Go, number 48. <clears throat> o Love That Will Not Let Me Go, I rest my weary soul in Thee. I give thee back the life I owe, that in thine ocean depths its flow may richer, fuller be. O light that followest all my way, I yield my flickering torch to thee. My heart restores its borrowed ray. In thy sunshine's glow its day may brighter, fairer be. Seekest me through pain, I cannot close my heart to thee. I trace the rainbow through the rain and feel the promise is not pain that morn shall hear. Bless me, O cross that lifteth up my head. I dare not ask to hide from thee. I lay in dust life's glory dead. And from the ground there blossoms red, life that shall end bless me. The next song is number 71. Number 71, As the Deer. 71, <clears throat> As the Deer. <clears throat> As the deer pants for the water, so my soul longs after you. You alone are my heart's desire, and I long to worship you. You alone are my strength, my shield. To you alone may my spirit yield. You alone are my heart's desire, and I long to worship you. I want you more than gold or silver, only you can satisfy. You alone are the real joy giver and the apple of my eye. Alone are my strength, my shield. To you alone may my spirit yield. You alone are my 
my heart's desire and I long to worship you. The song before the Lord's Supper is number 335, In Memory of the Savior's Love. 335, In Memory of the Savior's Love. <clears throat> <clears throat> Excuse me. In memory of the Savior's love, we keep the sacred feast, where every humble, contrite heart is made a welcome guest. By faith we take the bread of life with which our souls are fed. And keep in token of his blood that was for sinners shed. Beneath his manner thus we sing the wonders of his love. And here anticipate by faith the heavenly feast of We come to uh, this part of our service where we observe the Lord's Supper. Uh, the song uh, very, very aptly uh, portrayed what the Lord's Supper is all about. Uh, it's all in memory of our Savior's love. Uh, it's a sacred feast. It's a feast in which we remember uh, the agony that Jesus went through on the cross, the blood that he shed for each one of us, and the symbols that are here before us in the Lord's Supper are uh, symbols of his body, the bread, his blood, the fruit of the vine. Let's remember that... Uh, this was all part of your divine plan that um, while we were yet sinners, you would send Jesus to us. And at just the right time, he would sacrifice himself one time, just one time. And he would become our high priest sitting at your right hand as our mediator. And so as we go back to the cross of Calvary, we remember the crucifixion as we observe his supper. Let's uh, pray for the bread. <clears throat> Heavenly Father, we're so grateful that Jesus was willing to be the great Savior, the Son of God and the Son of Man. It is that Son of Man that felt the pain of the nails driven through his hands and feet. And we just pray that as we partake of this bread, that we'll remember the suffering that he felt as he hung on that cross for us. We pray this in his most holy name. Amen. <clears throat> the second line of the second verse of this song says, the cup and token of his blood that was for sinners shed. Let's pray for the fruit of the vine. We understand the power that is in Jesus' blood. It is the power of our redemption. It is the power of our forgiveness of sins. And as we think of the blood that flowed from his body and uh, just oozed the life from him, we remember how powerful this blood is yet today. We just pray for this fruit of the vine and we pray for uh, the forgiveness of our sins through that blood. It's in his name we pray. Amen.
as the Lord's Supper is completed, we are also reminded that on the first day of the week, we are to uh, lay by in store and give as we have prospered. Give as we have prospered. It's very, very important when we think of our giving, to think of how prosperous we are, to think uh, of the things that we have that uh, all come from the Lord. And so as we give, let's just remember that indeed uh, every good and perfect gift is from above and uh, all uh, that we have uh, is yours. Help us to remember that as we give. Let's pray. Our dear Heavenly Father, we just thank you for the opportunity you uh, have, have uh, given to us to just uh, lay by in store, uh, to take what we have prospered and give it back to you. We just understand that in order for your church to operate the way it should, that uh, these monies will be used both to save the lost and to help those that are in need. Uh, we just pray that you would bless us in our giving, understanding that the scriptures tell us that the Lord loves a cheerful giver. We pray this in his most holy name. Amen. And the last song that we'll sing is number 148. 148, I Keep Falling in Love with Him. Lively song, so uh, get ready. Get your tapping shoes on. <clears throat> 148, I Keep Falling in Love with Him. I keep falling in love with him over and over and over and over again. I keep falling in love with him over and over and over and over again. He gets sweeter and sweeter as the days go by. Oh, what a love between my Lord and I. I keep falling in love with him over and over and over and over again. He keeps blessing me over and over and over and over and over again. He keeps blessing me over and over and over and over and over again. He gets sweeter and sweeter as the days go by. Oh, what a love between my Lord and I. I keep falling in love with him over and over and over and over again. He keeps cleansing me over and over and over and over and over again. He keeps cleansing me over and over and over and over and over again. He gets sweeter and sweeter as the days go by. Oh, what a love between my Lord and I. I keep falling in love with him over and over and over and over again. I hope you've enjoyed the song service as much as I did. Uh, as most of you know, I love to sing. So it was uh, great. Uh, sing praises to the Lord. And we sing praises to the Lord because indeed uh, the Lord is worthy of that praise. If you were there this morning, you heard that the title of my lesson for the evening is Unconditional Reverence. And I am going to take you back uh, to the days of King Nebuchadnezzar uh, in the Old Testament. And uh, we are going to look in the book of Daniel. All right. We're going to look in the book of Daniel. Daniel chapter 3, verses 16 to 18. And I must throw a little background here. Uh, at this point in time, Daniel has been promoted, and he's uh, almost second in command to King Nebuchadnezzar. And um, Daniel made a request. He requested of Nebuchadnezzar that uh, three young men, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, uh, be uh, promoted over the province of Babylon. 
And so this was while da uh, Daniel was in the king's court. With that, Nebuchadnezzar had a huge golden image of himself uh, made. It was 60 cubits by six cubits, and he set it up on the plain of Dura in the province of Babylon. And he sent word to assemble all the satraps and all the prefects and the judges and whatnot. Uh, and then um, the satraps, seeing that maybe their favor with Nebuchadnezzar was waning, uh, said that, uh, you know what? You are such a great king, and that image of you is so wonderful and great. Uh, we think that uh, at the sound of the horn and the flute and the lyre uh, and the bagpipe and all music, that wherever people are, they ought to bow down and worship the golden image that Nebuchadnezzar the king has set up. Unfortunately, Nebuchadnezzar listened to that bad advice. And word came back to him that these three men, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, at the sound of the music, did not bow down to worship him. Uh, the satraps were glad to bring this news to Nebuchadnezzar. Uh, they had said, but whoever does not fall down and worship you shall be cast in the midst of a furnace of blazing fire. And they said, oh, by the way, those three guys that Daniel appointed, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, the music went off and they did not bow down. And so uh, uh, they had influenced Nebuchadnezzar so much that he literally flew into a rage. And uh, he heated this furnace uh, very, 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 very hot. And he called Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego before him, uh, kind of asking, okay, you had your chance. Why didn't you bow down to the image that was set up? Here are the words of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, uh, upon which our lesson is based this evening. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego replied to the king, O Nebuchadnezzar, we do not need to give you an answer concerning this matter. If it be so, our God whom we serve is able to deliver us from the furnace of blazing fire, and he will deliver us out of your hand, O king. And then verse 18, and here is the total reverence that these three young men had. But even if he does not, let it be known to you, O king, that we are not going to serve your gods or worship the golden image you have set up. All right. Reverence to God. Unconditional reverence to God. We should revere God for one important reason. He is God, not merely for what he does that may benefit us personally. It is right to worship God because God is God, period, exclamation point. We didn't create God. God created us. God made that very, very clear to Job when Job uh, started to complain to him. And there were a couple of chapters that God just flat out let it be known that, Job, you didn't set any of this up. You didn't set the planets in their turn. You didn't set the sun and the moon. You didn't lift the mountains. You didn't divide the waters from the dry land. I did that. God has created us, and there need be no other consideration. Whatever serves God's wise purposes 
That should be our desire. Even, even if his glory might require him to refrain from even saving us or giving, a, giving to us what we have requested at the time we have requested it. I would like it to take you back to 1 Samuel chapter 3, verse 18. And this is at the calling of young Samuel, that God has called Samuel to be one of his prophets. It says, so Samuel told him everything and hid nothing from him. And here's what Samuel said. Never forget these words. It is the Lord. Let him do what seems good to him. Do you see that wisdom? Whatever God does, that is right because God is God and we are not. When we go into ShopRite or any of the local stores that we may shop in, the, the prices are stamped on each individual item. Now, we may have coupons and we may redeem those and get money off, but we don't get, get to go up to the, uh, the, the cash register to the cashiers and haggle over the prices. We can't say, say, oh, the price for that, uh, for those pork chops or the price for those frozen peas was way too high. I only want to pay this much. But for a long time in the world, haggling over prices was pretty normal. And in, in some cases it is. If you buy something from someone personally, for example, if you go online when you're looking for something and, and you find it, and then you call the person who's selling the item and they have a price that they want for it. If we think that uh, the price may be a little too high, we may bargain with them. And sometimes that bargaining works. And sometimes we come to a happy medium. Well, let me say this to you. There's no bargaining with God. The price is stamped on it already. We can't go up and say, I don't like this price. We can't bargain with God. It's a sad truth that it, with many, it amounts to a subtle form of trying to bargain with God. If you do this for me, I'll do that for you. It's kind of like that old saying, there are no atheists in foxholes. You know, the, the, I, I, you know, I, I don't know much about war, but I have heard stories of men in foxholes seemingly, uh, you know, with the enemy all around them saying, God, if you save me, I will, <laughs> who knows what. What are you doing? You're kind of bargaining with God. We'll agree to do this or that as long as you make it worth our while. I'll come to all of your worship services, God. If, if you give me that job that I've been trying to get, or for a young person, uh, I'll, I'll, uh, come to worship services and sing your praises if, uh, uh, as a man, if, uh, you, uh, uh, soften up that young lady that I would like to go out with. Uh, God, I, you know, I'll do what you want. If, uh, if you give me a raise at my job, all oh, sometimes we think of in terms of obedience is contingent upon some sort of payoff. If not in the short term, at least in the long term. And if God doesn't do as we wish, then we're almost tempted to complain what good is God? 
And we have all of those detractors out there. A hurricane comes along and destroys property. Perhaps even lives are lost. And there are those detractors that say, if God was such a nifty God, why did he let all of that happen? Can, can we see how much of a utilitarian uh, approach to God this is? It's, it's like saying, God, I'll do it, but what's in it for me? What do I get out of all this? Now, is that the way we limit our earthly friendships? When a person that we look at, that we truly view as a friend of ours, is he, is he just or she just a friend to the point where we can use them for our good? Or is that friend a friend because we have similar purposes and we, we help and aid one another without asking? It's never uh, in our friendships if we want that friendship to be lasting. I'll be your friend, but you know what? What's in it for me? A famous commentator by the name of James Houston put it this way. I hope all of you know what a pragmatist is. Just as the pragmatist, and here's a pe person who looks at something in black and white, no gray areas. It's this way, my way, or the highway. Just as the <laughs> pragmatist has no friends because he simply uses people, so are pragmatic Christians. And they are indeed numerous today that they want to use God and do not realize that rather than use God, they need to come to know him in an intimate way. In Acts chapter uh, 20 and verse 35, we get Jesus's words that say it is more blessed to give than to receive. And uh, this means more than the offering that we offered just a little while ago. He pointed to a principle that is applicable to God. And it's just as applicable to God as it is to human beings. Even with God, and this may be the heart of the lesson, we should derive more joy from giving than from getting. And even when we are giving, it should not be merely because God says that we're supposed to give. Just almost as if saying, if I will give, I will get. If I give more, more blessedness would come my way. It's not how it works. We can't bargain with God. God was not created for us. God created us. We were created for him. When we're told that we're made in his image, we are the way God wants us to be. Yet how many folks are there out there are just in need and expecting Jesus to quench our thirst when we should be satisfying him. You know that, that little story when uh, Jesus said, you know, when I was hungry, you gave me food. When I was naked, you gave me clothes. When I was thirsty, you gave me to drink. And, and he listed that whole litany of things. And the apostle said, whoa, 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 whoa. I don't remember doing those things. 
And Jesus turned it around on them. He says, as much as you do it for these people, you do it for me. There is the blessedness of giving that we do for other people. We, we should be literally pouring our lives out as human beings, not drawing on him to satisfy us. We should always be in the business of satisfying the Lord. It's what doing the will of God means. It means being found satisfied, satisfying in the eyes of God. Oswald Chambers put it this way, to seek God truly, we must desire simply and purely to fill his heart with gladness. I believe we fill the Lord's heart with gladness when we do his will. Like Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. We can't do that. We can't serve other gods. We can't bow down to a golden image. You know what? The Lord is going to protect us. And they even went to the extent that even if he doesn't protect us from the fire, he is still the one true and living God, not that golden image. No bargaining here. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego couldn't read the future. They didn't know exactly what was going to happen. But they knew this. They would have complete and utter and unconditional reverence to the Lord. Do we have that same reverence today? Well, you know what? I don't believe that we can have that complete reverence until we become children of God. We become children of God by obeying him into salvation. We do that by accepting and understanding that Jesus Christ is indeed the son of the living God. That we're sorry for the way that we have lived and we want to repent of our former lives and the former deeds that we did. And finally, to be baptized for the remission of your sins. That is our invitation this evening. If you need to come to the Lord, we pray that you will. Just get in touch and we will be at your beck and call. Let's close with a prayer. Hey, Heavenly Father, help us to realize what a great God you are. Help us to realize that, as Jesus said, uh, I came to serve, not to be served. Help us to be your humble servants. In being your humble servants, we show that unconditional reverence to you. Not what's in it for me, but rather, how can I please you, my God? Bless us in this as we think about it this evening. As we put our heads on the pillows, help us to remember that you are indeed our God. And everything that uh, we do in our lives, we should do. All of our actions and words and deeds should be those that point to pleasing you, our God. Be with us this evening. Be with us through our lives. Help us to look forward to the next time that we meet together. We pray this in his most holy name. Amen. Please be safe and may God bless you all. Amen.